This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine for electronic parts. Since I have made my own Arduino Pro Micro, I have been using it with different sensors and breakout boards. And there are two reasons behind it. The first reason is that there are very few tutorials available for Arduino Pro Micro. So I want to use it as much as possible to provide some help to those who want to use it. The second reason is that I want to check the performance of my designed Arduino Pro Micro when it is used with different analog and digital sensors and breakout boards. So it's going to be a long series where I will be using Arduino Pro Micro with all those sensors, breakout boards and wireless communication modules which I've been using with Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, Raspberry Pi Pico, ESP32, ESP8266 and STM32 etc. So consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming tutorials. Anyway, previously I used the Arduino Pro Micro with the PN532 NFC RFID module and it worked tremendously. During the practical demonstration, I also checked it with my designed 5V and 3A power supply. If you want to learn how to design a professional PCB in Ultium Designer, how to fix design errors in seconds, how to generate Gerber files, how to order cheap yet high quality PCBs from PCBWay, how to order your SMD components, how to place and solder tiny SMD components, how to burn a bootloader on Arduino Pro Micro, then you should watch my previous video. I have added a link in the description. Anyway, today I'm going to use the Arduino Pro Micro with the I2C supported MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and the SSD1306 I2C supported OLED display module. And I will use my designed 5V and 3A power supply to power up all the electronics. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. As I said earlier, the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and the SSD1306 OLED display module both are I2C supported. So using only two pins on the Arduino Pro Micro, you can connect both the modules. As you can see, I have connected the SCL and SDA pins of the MLX9614 and the SSD1306 OLED display module to the SCL and SDA pins. On my Arduino Pro Micro, I have clearly labeled the SCL and SDA pins and even I have clearly labeled the SS, MOSI, MISO and SCLK pins. So this way, I don't have to remember these pins. Anyway, on the ready-made Arduino Pro Micro, pin 2 is the SDA and pin 3 is the SCL. Connect the voltage and ground pins of both modules with 3.3V and ground pins of the Arduino Pro Micro. I'm using my 5V and 3A power supply to power up all the electronics. I have connected the 5 volts wire to the raw pin on the Arduino Pro Micro and the ground wire is connected to the ground pin of the Arduino Pro Micro. I can also use a USB cable. It really doesn't matter if you don't have such a power supply. You can even use your laptop or computer to power up all these components while performing your initial experiments. And if you think you need an external power supply to power up your Arduino board and all the other electronics using a 12 volt adopter or a 12 volt battery, or a LiPo battery pack or a lithium ion battery pack or even a solar panel then I highly recommend using a 5V and 3A power supply because with 3A you can power up pretty much all the sensors and the majority of the breakout boards and motors so that's all about the connections if still you have got any confusion then you can follow this circuit diagram you can download it from the article available on electronicclinic.com now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. If you have been using Ultium Designer for creating schematics and designing your PCBs and you don't know about Ultium 365, then let me tell you about it. Ultium 365 lets you store projects in the cloud with all the documents and components you might need to complete all your tasks. To unlock all of the functionality of Ultium 365, you must first connect to your workspace a separate environment where all your data exists. 
After logging into your account, you can access all of the features of the Ultium 365 platform. Let me show you how to create a workspace. Click on the Not Signed In drop down button and click on the Sign In. Click on the Register an Account. It's just a two steps process into your email ID or you can also register with Gmail and Facebook. Once you complete the registration, then come back to Ultium Designer, enter your email ID and password, check the sign in automatically box and click on the sign in button. And your Ultium 365 workspace will activate. Click on manage if you want to change your password, your information and you can also write about your experience and projects. And finally, you can click on the save button. I will share more tips and tricks with you in my upcoming videos. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. Now let's get back to our project. This is the same code from my getting started video on the Arduino Nano and MLX 9614 temperature sensor. And this code is perfectly compatible with the Arduino Pro Micro. You can clearly see I'm using the same libraries and I didn't even change a single instruction. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and my designed Arduino Pro Micro in action. Anyway, before I'm going to start the practical demonstration, first let me tell you about the emissivity value which is usually ignored by most of the boys and girls and as a result, they would get the wrong temperature values. As you know very well, the MLX 9614 is a non-contact infrared temperature sensor and is completely different from those surface contact based temperature sensors. And you might also know every object or material has its own emissivity value. Let's say you are designing a contactless temperature monitoring system for COVID patients and you ignore the emissivity value of the human skin then how you are supposed to get an accurate temperature reading. During my first test, I completely ignored the emissivity value and as a result, I got wrong temperature readings as I was using the standard emissivity value of one, while in reality, different objects have different emissivity values. Anyway, I collaborated the MLX 9614 temperature sensor as per the human skin and then I started getting the actual temperature readings and this way I built myself the most accurate contactless temperature monitoring system for COVID patients. So you need to watch my getting started video on the MLX 9614 and Arduino. I have added a link in the description. So let's go ahead and start measuring the temperature. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.